Hey, what's up beautiful people? Samson Williams here. I'm gonna give a brief overview of equity crowdfunding and crowdfunding as a whole. Earlier today, I had a conversation with uh, Khalid and Muhammad. They're from Canada. They, do real, they were in the construction business. They're going into real estate development. They're looking for some capital and financing options. And so they're like, what is crowdfunding? We sort of heard about it. And I was like, we have a lot of videos out there that talk about it, but there's no thing like making a new one to refresh everyone's memory. So on that note, let's just get started. We're going to talk about these three things. This is for equity crowdfunding. You can also use debt crowdfunding. We're going to talk about what is it, why you should care and how it works. Those are the three main crucial things. So if you want, you can skip forward to any of the other, you can skip forward to one of the videos to see this or you can just hang tight and we're going to break it down for you in the next few minutes. Okay. Coming right back, equity crowdfunding. What is crowdfunding? You've actually all probably done crowdfunding. If you've ever donated or given to a cause, that's called crowdfunding. We don't think of crowdfunding often, but we all do it particularly for political campaigns. Uh, I think Bernie Sanders is one of the best at this, those micro donations where he says, grab your phone, send me money, I'll represent you. So uh, during the presidential election, um, the past presidential election, he raised $57 million in a week through micro donations. Most of his donations were under $30. Why does this matter? In order to raise $57 million and your average donation is under $30, it takes a lot of donors. That's a key sign that you have traction in the market. So what is that? Why is that different? Why is donating different than equity crowdfunding? Because in equity crowdfunding, it works just like Shark Tank or Lion's Den, depending on what part of the world you live in. Uh, Shark Tank, instead of having five sharks, you have thousands of sharks and you have to offer them up equity in your business. So you say, I have a pie this big, I'm going to offer the crowd this much equity uh, so they can be co-owners in my business. That's equity crowdfunding. That's what it is uh, in a nutshell. So moving right along, why do you care? Hey, Samson, crowdfunding sounds interesting. Why do I care? You care if you're a small business owner or a business owner, period, because there's really no thing as a small business owner because your business is big to you. If you're a startup or entrepreneur, it's a different way to go out and engage your community and engage people uh, in your business. Right now, or rather prior to uh, May 16th of 2016, businesses couldn't go and ask their customers, I have a product, I sell markers. You can either buy my product or you can buy uh, equity in my marker business. Before May 16th of 2016, that wasn't actually possible. Should probably write that down. Just as a note, uh, May 16th, 2016, that's when the Jobs Act went live. And so crowdfunding as a thing, equity crowdfunding and debt crowdfunding as a thing is relatively new. So that's why you should care because it's a different way for you to capitalize and finance your business or your startup. All right. How does it work? We sort of talked about how it worked, but let's just get into a little bit of details. How it works. We have a great workbook uh, that Dr. Morat and I have put together on. It's called Equity Crowdfunding Workbook, um, oddly enough. And so it walks you through this step by step. The basics of how it works is one, you need a business. So if you're not a business, if you're a really expensive hobby, it's not going to work because uh, people aren't going to invest in you or rather people can't invest in you if you're not a business. So once you become a business, you can submit your application, your um, package to a FINRA approved crowdfunding portal or crowdfunding platform. They use the word portal and platform. They're synonymous in this instance. Uh, there's approximately 30 FINRA approved platforms. Uh, Start Engine, WeFunder, they're probably, they're, rather they're leading, they're competing for first and second place in the U.S. market. And so you can go to any of these FINRA approved platforms. The platforms vary depending on what they do. Uh, for instance, if you want to do buy the block uh, for real estate, you can go to buytheblock.com and use them. One of the things I forgot to mention or I'm about to mention that's very crucial, when you do equity crowdfunding under the Jobs Act, the reason this is key, the Jobs Act got signed in law May 16, 2016, and this allows anyone, retail investors, so-called unsophisticated investors, to invest in your businesses. 
And so when you put your business package together, you go on one of the FINRA approved platforms. This enables your customers, uh, those retail investors, as well as institutional investors, the opportunity to invest in your business. So this is a big deal because prior to May, 20, May 16th of 2016, you couldn't legally do this, but now you can. Each platform has its different requirements um, depending on what, what it is that you're offering. But part of that is determining what am I actually going to offer the crowd? Because remember, it's just like Shark Tank, except online on a platform. So instead of having five sharks, you might have uh, 2000 sharks. Uh, to give you an example of this, one that I love a whole lot, popcom.shop. Uh, check them out, popcom.shop. Their old name used to be Vending Machine Solutions. And as their name hints at, they're in the vending machine business. Um, recently, uh, the, uh, you can follow her online at the Don Dixon. She's an amazing woman. She's out there crushing it. Uh, they raised $1.07 million. Uh, $1 million. I'm gonna write this down because that's the most, the amount of money you can raise under what's called Reg CF. So they raised their maximum they could raise under Reg CF. They had approximately 1,700 investors. The uh, average investment was $565. If you follow uh, Dawn Dixon's blog on Medium, she talks about her journey, how it took her 90-day uh, her journey to hitting this number. And so they were able to raise their, their initial $1.7 million, and now they've moved on. Uh, and this week they closed a $10 million uh, funding round, which is great because she built upon that momentum of hitting that uh, million dollar mark to showing institutional investors. She's got that traction, she's got that pool, and they were able to raise a million, uh, $10 million after that. So it's just a, a slight example. Uh, in our masterclass that we're having in New York on June 1st, we'll go into more detail. This is just for your general awareness so that you know what is equity crowdfunding. Okay, switching subjects for our switching sides for just a moment. Uh, we've got Chris Bennett, blockchain beard guy right here. And so I know you're asking yourself, why do you have these terms up here? ICO, STO, IEO. So this stands for initial coin offering. This stands for STO, securitized token offering. And this stands for initial exchange offering. So these are all things from the blockchain space. I'm just gonna write this down because Blockchain works like hot sauce. No, it doesn't. You just can't put that shit on everything. But this is why this is super important. If you want to learn about blockchain, follow Chris Bennett, Bennett hashtag blockchain beer guide. He'll teach you all about blockchain. And so what we saw in 2017 and 2018, a lot of startups and entrepreneurs, they're like, hey, we were, we're, initi we're issuing these coins, these tokens, because they were raising money. They were doing crowdfunding. Uh, they were raising money for their blockchain projects, for their blockchain quote unquote businesses. And so what that whole episode, ICOs unregulated. Let's just write that down. Right? ICOs were unregulated crowdfunding. So in, in 2017 and 2018, uh, they raised approximately $26.8 billion globally through unregulated crowdfunding. So it showed crowdfunding worked, but when you have an unregulated market, there's a lot of bullshit to deal with. So uh, 2017, 2018, the ICO market, 98% of those are gonna fail. Um, they're right around the 80% mark. And so even though those projects failed, they showed that crowdfunding as a thing works. So when we talk about STO, it's as simple, these are regulated. These are regulated crowdfunding. Uh, these are regulated crowdfunding. That example that we just mentioned, uh, the Don Dixon's uh, pop, uh, popcom.shop, they issued, using Reg CF, they raised a million dollars. They also issued a token along with their equity offering in their business. I believe their investors got B shares. You can check out uh, all their information. They raised funds on Start Engine. I'll drop the link down below. So an STO is a regulated form of crowdfunding. You can offer equity, you can offer debt, you can actually also offer tokens. So this is super important. IEOs, initial exchange offerings, IEOs are just unregulated um, crowdfunding platforms. So if StartEngine was in the blockchain space, was an exchange, 
it would be, it could do IOs, initial exchange offerings. So in this instance, again, it reinforces crowdfunding as a concept, crowdfunding as a method for raising capital works. Um, you just need to be aware of, am I dealing with a regulated exchange? Uh, is the exchange actually gonna um, go through this process in a compliant manner? So we wanted to bring this in because all of these people saying I'm running a blockchain business, woohoo, yeah, that's great, that's exciting, we're, in, we're issuing tokens and coins. Their actual problem they're addressing is they're startups and entrepreneurs who need funding. How do they get this funding? They do it through crowdfunding. That's how they get that funding. So when you hear I'm a blockchain business, think, okay, what's your business? What are you doing? Put on your shark hat. You know, you're a shark, you're a potential investor. Are you on a FINRA approved, our, this is for the United States, are you on a regulatory approved platform, our body, and how are you issuing this uh, offering? So in the crowdfunding world, we're focused particularly here on where we at, Reg CF. And in Reg CF, you can raise up to million seventy thousand dollars but there's also something called Reg A, Reg A+, Reg D, and Reg S, and I'll make us some videos for those. So in Reg A, you can raise up to $50 million. In Reg D, it's unlimited, but it's also limited to so, uh, sophisticated or institutional investors. And Reg S is for international participants. So in our masterclass, we cover all of this. I just wanted to give you a brief overview and a refresher for everyone who's like, hey, I'm looking for startup funding. I'm looking for startup capital. I can't get a bank loan. I don't wanna go the VC route. I don't want to have a billion dollar company. I want to have a lifestyle company where I'm only looking for up to a million dollars or maybe five or six million dollars and you can go the Reg A plus or the Reg A or the Reg A plus route. So we're going to talk about those in some future videos. I just wanted to get this off my mind because I spoke to Khalid and Muhammad. So shout outs to Khalid and Muhammad for asking me these questions to remind me to reintroduce everyone to equity crowdfunding. I reintroduce everyone to crowdfunding. For more information, uh, you can Google the Jobs Act. Crowd, uh, Jobs Act. Uh, I will actually put the link down below so you don't even have to Google it. I encourage you all to join the CFPA.org, the Crowdfunding Professionals Association. They're the guys and gals who wrote the crowdfunding laws, the Jobs Act crowdfunding laws uh, that are, pertain to the US. So that's it for the moment. I'm Samson Williams. Thank you for following and letting me rant. Hopefully you can read my whiteboard well enough. If you have any questions or comments, drop it down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys at our masterclass in New York on June 1st. Peace.